Hi there first grade friends, it's Mrs. King from Plum Point Elementary. Today we are going to continue talking about the difference between literature text and informational text. Today we're going to dive into an informational text. We're going to be reading From Tadpole to Frog. And this is written by Shannon Zemlicka. This is an informational text and we know this because it has things like a topic, which would be frogs key details, a table of contents, headings, real photographs. Sometimes in informational text you'll find bold print or a glossary which takes you to figure out what the vocabulary words that were bold. And then you have an index. You can read an informational text like this in any order, it doesn't matter. Whereas a literature text, you have to read it in order or it's not going to make sense. Basically, an informational text gives you information or facts also known as key details. Let's take a look at a few key vocab words before we get started. Here are some key words from our text that we will be looking for today. The first one is tadpole, hatching, gills, lungs, and last, froglet. Let's check out another tool that your teacher has to help you when you need to decide whether a text is a piece of literature or informational. This is called an informational text walk. You might remember that last time that we met we talked about the literature text walk. So this should be kind of familiar to you. So this informational text walk has things on it like main topic, to remind us that an informational text has a main topic. The story we're going to read today is from tadpole to frog. The main topic is going to be how a frog changes. We also have a sequence of information. Now, informational texts can be read out of order. However, there is still a sequence of information of how it's presented to you. For example, if it's telling you how to do something, or in this case, how a tadpole changes over time to become a frog. There's also going to be key vocabulary. We're also going to see the purpose behind writing the text. What is the focus, the key details, important vocabularies, and the big idea? Okay friends, let's start to explore our book. Let's look at the front cover. First we have the title, From Tadpole to Frog. Our author's name is Shannon Zemlicka. And if we look at the illustration on the front cover, what do we notice? It's a real photograph. That might be the first good hint that we have that this text might be an informational text. We have our back cover. And even informational texts have a title page. Our title page reminds us of the title and the author's name. From Tadpole to Frog by Shannon Zemlicka. Informational texts have things called text features that help us to draw meaning from the text. The first major text feature that we're going to be looking at is called the Table of Contents. The Table of Contents is a tool that we can use in the book when we're looking for specific information about the topic. Today we're not going to necessarily go out of order when we read this book, even though we can. We are going to read it in order, and you're going to find that each page goes along with the items in the table of contents. At the very end, we're going to get to the glossary and the index, and I'll tell you what those are when we get there. Are you ready to read? Ribbit, here is a frog. How does a frog grow? We have a heading. The heading says, a tiny animal grows. Let's read the details to find out more. A mother frog lays many eggs. Some kinds of frogs lay eggs on land. Most kinds lay eggs underwater. Thick goo covers the eggs to protect them. A tiny animal grows inside each egg. Here's our next heading. I see one of our vocabulary words too. Actually, I see three. Can you find them? This is another text feature that we find in informational texts. Now these words are green, but they are also bold print. Can you say bold print? Great work. 
So in an informational text, sometimes it tells us what the keywords and vocabulary are so that we know that we need to figure out what they mean. This is where our glossary will come in. Let's read the title. The tadpole leaves the egg. Let's read the details. The tiny animal grows for about a month. Then it breaks out of its egg. This is called hatching. Now the animal is a tadpole. A tadpole looks like a small black fish. It breathes with body parts called gills. Here's our next heading. The tail gets longer. The young tadpole is small and weak. It cannot swim yet. The tadpole holds on to a plant or a rock with its mouth. Its tail begins to grow. Here's our next heading. The tadpole starts to swim. The tadpole wiggles its tail to swim. Swimming makes the tadpole hungry. What will it do? Here's our next heading. The tadpole starts to eat. The tadpole eats tiny plants that grow underwater. Some tadpoles also eat frog eggs. Some tadpoles even eat other tadpoles. Eating makes the tadpole grow. Here's our next heading. Back legs grow. Two tiny bumps appear near the tadpole's tail. The bumps grow into back legs. The tadpole kicks its back legs to help it swim. All right, what's that top sentence called? A heading, good job. Front legs grow. Here's some details. I see a key word in there, do you? Two more bumps appear near the tadpole's head. These bumps grow into front legs. Lungs begin to grow inside the tadpole's body. Lungs let the tadpole breathe air. Next heading, the tadpole leaves the water. The tadpole has legs for hopping and walking. It has lungs for breathing air. It can live on land. It climbs out of the water and becomes a froglet. Next heading, the tail shrinks. The froglet catches insects to eat on land. Some kinds of froglets also catch food in the water. A froglet swims with its legs. It does not need a tail to swim. The tail slowly shrinks. Our next heading is, Hello Frog! The froglet becomes a frog when its tail is gone. It has grown from tadpole to frog. All right, let's take a look at our last two text features that we will find in some informational texts. On the left, we have our glossary. The glossary is a list of the key words that the author felt was important when they wrote the book. It gives a definition to those words. Let's look at the words that the author found important in this text. The first one is froglet. It even shows you how to pronounce it. A frog's form when it has left the water and still has a tail. The next keyword was gills, body parts for breathing underwater. Hatching, breaking out of an egg. Lungs, body parts for breathing air. And finally, tadpole, a frog's form after it leaves an egg. The last text feature we find is on the right. It's called the index. Here's another place that we can look for specific page numbers that will take us to information on smaller topics within our topic. For example, if we wanted to just know about how a frog breathes, we can look at pages 6, 16, or 18. We can also look up things like eating, eggs, froglet, legs, swimming, and tail. And there are all the page numbers where we can find that information listed in the index. Let's take another quick look at our T-chart that we made that shows the differences between literature and informational text. Remember that today's text that we read from tadpole to frog was an informational text. It had things like a topic, key details, a table of contents, headings, real photographs, bold print which showed our key vocabulary, a glossary, index, and you could read it in any order. Today's reader response is going to be taking a moment to draw a picture of something from our text that shows that it was an informational text. 
let's take a look at Mrs. King's Reader Response Journal to see an example of how we can prove that today's text was an informational text. Okay, here's Mrs. King's Reader Response Journal. Today we're going to be showing how we know that books like From Tadpole to Frog are informational texts. So the first thing I'm going to do is write my title at the top of my page. After I write mine, you can pause it and write it at the top of yours too. The title was From Tadpole to Frog. Excellent. Now we went over many text features and many items that make an informational text informational and not literature. But the one that I want to write today is I am going to show bold print vocabulary words. So I'm going to draw a picture of my page. This page, this book was kind of long. And I'm going to write a sentence from the text and show that bold print word. So my sentence was, it breathes with body parts called gills. Now the word gills was the word that was bold print, so I'm going to make it big and thick. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but we know what I'm talking about. I need a period. I'm also going to write bold print. I think I might add one more way that this was an informational text. And I think that will be the heading. So the heading on this page was the tadpole leaves the egg. And I'm going to label that heading. Okay, you can try it like mine or you can find another way to draw a picture that shows that this text was an informational text and not a piece of literature. Alright, your turn. Get to work.